All right, everybody, I'm at a 1997 house today. We're doing the whole house. We're doing a sewer camera inspection. We're doing a pool inspection. We're going in and out of this thing, attic to foundation. Let's get started. Not too much going on on the side of the house here, but this is where your primary bathroom is, and this is where they've replaced a couple of the windows. So these windows on this side are kind of the harder to see through ones, the kind of designer windows, because they're in the bathroom area. They don't match the other windows, but they're fine. I never want to see the bottom of the concrete pad. You gotta bring the grate up just a little bit right there. Columns in the backyard between the house and the pool are a little cracky. It's likely because we've got a lot of water in this area. Poor drainage. Well, the pool's actually got a cool barrier around it. This is really good for protecting your pools, but there's no openable gate on it. All of them have been locked shut so I don't know how you're supposed to access the pool I guess I'm just gonna take that apart for today definitely got some root action coming on from this big ficus tree all this root coming up through the walkway in the front of the home even the flower boxes are starting to fall apart a little bit see a lot of that <clears throat> it's a big tree Gonna have a lot of debris it's gonna make a mess definitely want to cut your flowers cut your plants back from the house so they're not touching it's conducive to termites this is a little bit of overwatered area so there's some moisture hitting the foundation back in here you can see some of the spalling up in there on the foundation wall or the stem wall do have main plumbing cleanouts right here abs we are doing a sewer cam clean out which is really smart because of those roots we'll see what's going on down there a little bit of damage on the garage door. Doesn't look too bad though. I'm sure it'll function fine. This walkway in the front has definitely settled a little bit. We can tell by this crack and by the lower in elevation from the sidewalk. So we've actually created ourselves a little bit of a trip hazard. Most of the windows on this house don't have screens. It's very common for me to run into a house that doesn't have a screen or sunshades on. They take them off because it looks a lot better when they sell the house. Just ask the seller if they're around. Your main water line coming in from the street, the sprinkler connection should be tapped into it before the shutoff. So if you go on vacation or something, you can turn off your uh, main house and still get sprinkler water so your plants don't die. So there's no bird stop material underneath concrete tiles on the edges. So that's a good inclination that the underlayment has not been replaced yet. We do have a buildup of debris, but we just talked about that. It's from that guy. Well, if we look in here, we can kind of see that underlayment starting to curl up a little bit. We can see the batten boards in the back. See what kind of condition they're in. If they're really deteriorated, that's telling me that the underlayment is old. But the first thing that happens with this underlayment as it dries out is it starts curling up on the edges. That's why we get roof leaks on the edges first. A little bit of a slip tile here. I'm actually starting to see some fasteners are starting to pull out too. Just telling me that they're just getting up in age. We're actually starting to see some of the ridge board right here at the front of the home. So this is telling me that the underlayment is pretty much shot. Mortar caps have been patched and repaired. Got more slip tiles down here. It's likely because the fasteners are letting go because they're getting too old. A little bit more there. All those exposed areas need to be repaired. More debris in the valleys. So the vents have actually been screened off just to keep the mice and the rats out of your house. All right, so let's see what's under them. Oh yeah, look at how curled up that underlayment is. It's really curled up. Bat board's getting old, we've got some debris. This underlayment's got some age to it. Not too much going on in the attic. Pretty standard roof. 
OSB sheathing, manufactured truss for structure, got blown in cellulose insulation, attic access hatch in the garage right there. Got an additional air plenum for your HVAC system to help distribute the air. It's one five ton unit for this house, so adequate um, ductwork or adequate placement of ductwork is going to be essential. So we've got a dryer exhaust duct and a laundry room vent fan terminating in the same hole at the roof. It's not approved. You don't want the vent to be discharging lint and going back into the bathroom fan causing problems with that. Plus you're discharging some lint on the floor up here in the attic. Get rid of your duct tape. Replace that with aluminum foil tape. It's a good idea as well with the furnace up in the attic to just double check the year it was manufactured, make sure it matches the unit on the outside. We've got the same serial number begins with the same digits on the unit up in the attic as it does on the exterior, so we're good. It's a good idea to keep Romex electrical wire about six feet away from that hatch just so nobody can accidentally pinch it or grab it when they're trying to get into the attic and electrocute themselves. Sometimes all the screens are in the garage, but I'm not going to count them. I'm not going to make sure that they're all there for you. Water heater looks good. It was replaced last year. Electric, we've got some protection in the front, so we can't drive into the water heater right there. We've actually got a drain pan on the bottom. So if it leaks, it should catch everything and then push out there and then go behind the water heater. Um, these drip pans are great for catching water, but if you're not going to terminate the exit of the water somewhere where it isn't going to cause damage, it does no good. Water softener here, looks like it's a brand new model, looks great, looks like it's still under warranty as well. You do have a laundry sink hookup out here in the garage if you care to use one in the future. I am going to move them and look behind them though and just see what we got. Definitely some moisture, it's all those calcium deposits right there. It's just telling me we've got excessive moisture on this side of the house and it's not draining properly. I don't know if they put the shades here to hide this or if it just happened to be in the same spot. Don't ask me. Yep. Oh boy. Oh, I think I hit the jackpot. I don't know if you guys own a pool, but this stuff is like gold nowadays. So it's hard to tell with the waterfall going in the backyard, but the AC system is actually wheezing a little bit. It's kind of struggling to breathe, and this would be why. Get too much gunk built up on your filter and it can't breathe right. You see how it's starting to suck in in the middle? No good. Need a new filter. So the laundry sink has been doing this for a few minutes now. It hasn't stopped. You see they put a hose connection on there? Just in case. Um, nope. Nope, the round hole part actually just goes right there. I don't know what you guys are doing. Right. This is kind of neat. Pull bookcase to reveal secret door. So this is the master closet on the back side of the master bedroom, primary bedroom. All the way over there is your primary. You've got a little shortcut door with your security system built onto it. So I guess if you're getting ready to go in the morning, you don't want to walk all the way around. You can come out your secret door, which is pretty cool. Looks like it's pretty good installation. I'm not sure what brand it is. I'm not going to be able to test it other than it opens and closes. That's it. Well, this house comes with a pretty pretty fancy butt spa. So I guess you push these buttons and you give your butt a spa. Sweet. Yeah, I'm not gonna test it. Last time I tested one of these, I had water all over the bathroom.
Well, pretty cool primary bathroom. Um, got this little shelving unit that they put on top of the countertop. It's great. Look at the screws that they used. Have a nice shoulder on them. Not like the ones in the laundry room. One thing else I wanted to point out is the bathtub and the shower made a little bit of noise when I turned the hot on. So we've maybe got some pressure issues. Maybe we've got some debris in the line. But also you can still see the squirting, the spritzing. It's kind of intermittent how it's working right there. But also there's no door on the shower. So you've always, always got to watch, especially with this type of flooring where you got little cracks in it where the moisture can get below. And once it gets below, it never dries out. So this is all, all that blue stuff is moisture spraying out from the shower. That, that dark blue area right there. It's telling me that that area is already getting really wet. I'm surprised there isn't more damage than there is, honestly. Oh, I just love these latches. Once they get out of line, it's like almost impossible to get them to latch up again. It's got to get over that little piece of metal in order, order for it to latch. Just not working. We can start to see some of the spaces from the sealant around the window. So those open areas are going to let moisture into the window. Yeah, definitely got a leak on the shower head. Not too much going on in this bathroom. We do have a loose toilet though. Got a nice little shape to that. Plus the shower head over there and the window in the back. Yeah, we're starting to see some of the weather stripping around the bottom there, kind of bow in. Just getting hot, getting wet. So I usually walk around and check all the vents to make sure that they're putting out some cold air. This thermal camera makes it really easy. I can just point it and check it. But I've got a vent up here that is actually throwing out warm air at the same time as I've got the air conditioning on over here so I'm um, it's probably not heating the air but it's probably air from outside but this vent is not connected to anything I'm not sure why they installed it in this small bedroom and you have two vents some of the fans here are not doing too good super wobbly there's the type of screws they're using in the kitchen cabinet I like to see the cabinet screws. I really do. Makes more sense. Under cabinet lighting really makes it easy for me to find grout cracks. I love it. I don't have to use my flashlight. I can just walk around and be like, oh, there's some. Miss a little bit over here. So now that I have the temperature on the inside dropped down a few degrees, and it's warmer on the outside, I can walk around with my thermal camera and see if I can spot any missing insulation or look at all the hot areas that are penetrating the home, like around the windows. I just ran the bathroom shower there, so that's what's going on there. Smoke detector, a little bit of heat there, a little bit of damage on the ceiling. Oh, look at that. there's your dog door. 82 degrees on the dog door surface, 84, 80, 81, 82, a couple degree difference. I've actually got a dog run out there attached directly to that door. It's pretty cool. We can come back in here, we can see the register off in the living room. We can see the ceiling wall joint there where it always lets in just a little bit of heat. Light fixtures are always going to be hot. So we're actually missing a little bit of insulation. It looks like above that air return, above that filter. When it's nice and square like that, it's usually easy to tell that it's insulation. So vaulted ceiling, always want to check these areas. There's your air register, hot area right there where the ceiling and the patio meet or the ceiling and the wall. Sunny. 
That's not actually heat, that's just a reflection. Sometimes thermal cameras can give off false positives or different temperatures. Uh, it looks like it's a different temperature, it's actually just a emissive surface. Time to start the sewer test. Gotta get this drain going or get this sink going. I'm gonna start some cold water. Hot water works too, but it puts steam down into the drain line and I don't want to have steam all over my camera. So I know I've already inspected this. We know it doesn't leak. So I'm just gonna let this run a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can't find this sink through the drain system located up front. Shouldn't be too bad. It's ABS clean outs. 1997 built the house, but we've got some decent root damage in the front. So I'm going to grab my drain camera and I'm going to throw it on those clean outs. See what we can find. Sewer camera inspection for 1858 West Rio Lane. Definitely have a belly at 30 feet, something where it's going down. That's the city connection right there, I guess. A little bit of water building up there. You got a belly at 34 feet right where the city connection is. It's retaining a little bit of water enough to where the water is above the video camera head. A belly like this could obstruct some debris or catch some debris and it could get clogged in the line. You might want to get this belly replaced. I would recommend contacting a plumber to evaluate the video and maybe offer an estimate uh, for the repairs for this. Like I said, this is right where the city connection is. Maybe a two foot run where it drops down, but then it comes back up before it goes into the city connection where it drops vertical again.
good so far.